Today, I'm going to be assembling a Sailor Moon themed keyboard featuring pink and purple pastels throughout the entire build. To start, I'm going to put down my pink Arcana desk mat created by Lean Doodles. The bare bones kit I'll be using is the Nextine 75 sent to me from Banggood. This is a 75% keyboard with 82 keys and I got it in the pink colorway. It features a multi-function rotary knob on the top left corner, as well as a USB-C port in the center. The back displays the words next time and what they call a copper logo plate, which gives it a little accent in the center. As for accessories, the kit includes a basic keycap puller and a USB-C cable. To begin the build, I put down my American Haptics work mat, which you can get 5% off of using my code MOCHI. Because this is a budget keyboard kit, I decided to try out the Tempest Tape Mod, which is a cost-friendly way to improve the sound. The top and bottom of the case is held together with clips, so I grabbed my iFixit kit and pulled out the blue opening picks. I placed all six around the edges, applied a little bit of pressure from the front, and it separated right away. When opening it up, I discovered a layer of foam in the bottom of the case. To apply the tape mod, I went ahead and separated the cable for the daughter board connected to the PCB. I also removed the rotary knob. From there, I put aside the top of the case and was left with the PCB sandwich, which I won't be taking apart. As you can see, this is a hot swap, so I won't need to do any soldering. I also noticed the mute pad in between the aluminum plate and PCB. For the tape mod, I'm going to be using blue painter's tape. The point of this mod is to create a poppier or thockier sounding keyboard while you type. I'm only going to be doing one layer for this keyboard. I like using painter's tape because it isn't incredibly sticky like some masking tapes, and it'll be easy to remove if I change my mind about it in the future. After applying the tape, I place the PCB sandwich back into the top of the frame and pop the knob back into place. Then I attached the daughter board back to the PCB and closed everything up. Next, I'll be working on the stabs. This kit includes clip-in stabilizers that are already pre-lubed, but I may want to modify them a little. I grabbed some switches that I'll be using for the build and added them to those keys. I also grabbed some spare keycaps to test out the sound and feel. I was actually surprised with how decent they felt, so I decided to only add some grease to the wires. For this, I'll be using the Stabilizer Grease Syringe Kit from the Keydot Company. Don't forget that you can check out this product by visiting the link in the description below, and you can get 5% off using my code MOCHI. This grease is super easy to apply with the syringe, so I went along the stabilizers and pressed down on the key as I worked on each one. This helped me spread the grease as well as test out how they felt. I was pretty happy with how they sounded and felt at this point, so the next step was to add my switches. For this build, I'll be going with Unicorn Linear Switches, sent to me from hippokeys.com. These are manufactured by Gatoron and feature an 18mm two-stage spring. The stem is made of palm and the top housing is made of transparent polycarbonate. The bottom is made of nylon. These come factory lewd, but I did go in and modify them with some 205G0, switch films, and Crytox GPL106 on the springs. I really love the color theme of these switches, and they're going to match the theme of this build really well. After adding all the switches, I did make sure to plug it in and test that all the switches were inserted correctly, which I did off camera. So far, I've been really enjoying this build, and this kit has been really easy to assemble and add modifications to. I really have no complaints so far, and I'm impressed with the quality of this budget barebones kit. Seeing the switches on this keyboard has me really excited to finish out the build. Now I'm ready to add keycaps, so I'll be starting out with my artisans. I received another amazing set of keycaps from Pink Treetops, and these were hand sculpted with clay. This trio includes Artemis, Luna, and Diana. I added them to the right side of the keyboard. For the top key, I added a white cat paw artisan with pink toe beans from Zomo Plus. I felt that it matched the trio very well. For the main keycaps, I'll be using Canon Caps Hydrangea, sent to me from Canon Keys. These feature a cherry profile and die sub PBT alphas and mods. The color theme for these matched the switches almost perfectly. I decided to only use the pink and purple keycaps for this keyboard as I felt the enter key in the main tray didn't match as well. I really appreciate the alternative colors they included for keys like this. Now the Sailor Moon themed keyboard is finished. I already expected it to look this amazing, but I was still really excited about the results. 
I especially love how well balanced all the colors from the artisans and main keycaps look together. While this keyboard does have RGB, unfortunately the switch and keycap combo did not allow it to shine through, but I did want to point this feature out in case anyone was specifically wanting this feature on the next time 75. I already love how it feels to type on this and I can't wait to start using it right away. Overall, I felt that this was a really quick hour mod and build and most of my time was actually spent lubing the switches prior to working on this keyboard. Regardless, I'm really in love with the end result and after working with the Next Time 75 Bare Bones kit, I can definitely recommend it for a fun budget build. In regards to the sound and feel of this keyboard, I really can't say how much the tape mod may have improved the sound because I haven't tried out this kit before. However, when trying this method out in the past for other boards, I always enjoy that extra pop that it adds. These unicorn linear switches sound really great too and they're extremely smooth and responsive with a fast upstroke due to the two-stage spring. As I mentioned earlier, I'm impressed by the included clip-in stabs and there is little to no wire rattle with these. If I were to go back and modify them a little more, I probably would apply some spare mods from my Soulmate modding kit. As for the keycaps, I'm always happy with anything from pink treetops and I just think they look super cute displayed on the side. The details are really intricate and these particular shades of pink and purple were the perfect choices. For the main keycaps, I'm also always happy with any keycaps from Canon Keys and the quality is always excellent. The legends are sharp and the keycaps feel premium. At the time of filming this video, Banggood has this keyboard listed at about $70 USD. It's totally worth checking out, so I'll be leaving a link down below. It comes in a lot of other colors too, and they actually offer a version that includes wireless connection options as well. I'll leave a link down below to that version too. If you liked this video or found it helpful, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Thank you again to Banggood, Canon Keys, Hippo Keys, and Pink Tree Tops for sponsoring this build, and thank you all for watching!